I mean, it was just one of the sweetest experiences I've ever had. And uh, I'm just sorry that tomorrow is the last day, Doctor. I really don't want to send you back home. I've been thinking about you calling him as pastor and let me be the water boy. Just let me sit around and just drink out of the bucket when he fills it up. Would you do it? Well, we might get a big church here, Bill, if we really go at that right, you know it? Dr. Cohen preached to us. Thank you again, Dr. Kevin. And I can't tell you how blessed I am this week. Every day is richer than the day before. And I can hardly wait until tomorrow. Now, when I was a junior boy, we lived two and a half miles from the railroad track and we had a freight that went by every afternoon and we would walk and run at two and a half miles just to see it pass And now the Lord has blessed me to be living in a helicopter age. And if I have to walk over here tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, I want to see that helicopter land. This is certainly an exciting time, a great time to be alive. Our trust not to be long tonight because I'm excited about tomorrow. I know I preach all the time, do your best now and don't count on tomorrow, but I'm kind of counting on tomorrow. I'm going to use for a subject this evening stumbling over simplicity stumbling over simplicity uh, for a text we turn to the book of second kings fifth chapter And I'd like to read verse 24, stumbling over simplicity. Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Now you might remember this message by seven ducks in muddy water. And then went he down and dipped or ducked himself seven times in Jordan according to the saying of the man of God. And then you might remember it as Mr. Clean. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child. And he was clean. Why do you suppose that as sophisticated, as educated, and mature as we are, we would rather 
choose suicide than to accept the gracious healing that can come from our Savior. Do you think that we can cure the sickness of society out of our own resources? People want to be saved, but they want to be saved on their own terms. There's nobody really wants to be lost. There's nobody really wants to go to hell. Now there are many who will get angry with you even if you suggest that they go there. Nobody wants to go to hell. But they want to be saved on their own terms. You know, we just don't like to follow directions. We will go to the doctor and he will give us a prescription we take it to the pharmacist and he will fill that prescription and type the directions on that so we can read it. And we will read it and understand what the doctor said. He said, take one three times a day and I never could understand that how I could take one pill three times a day but at any rate I I, I think I know what he means uh, but instead of taking three pills a day I said, I think I can get by with one. Haven't you done that? If it tells you to take it in the morning, well, I can take it in the noonday. I can take it before I go to bed. We just don't like to follow directions. We can see a sign saying wet paint. And there's something in us they just want to make us touch it to see. We want to have our own way about it. Uh, we uh, want to go to heaven. We want to be saved according to how we think. I think if I do thus and so, I think I'll make it easy. The robe of righteousness is not altered to fit the man. The man has to be altered to fit the robe. Did you know there are some people who don't want to play the game by the rules? Uh, somebody uh, thinks that he can have his way, think that the rules ought to be changed just to suit him. Now in the kingdom of God, uh, salvation would be first base. 
baptism and uniting with the church would be second base. And Christian service would be third base. And you've got to get to third base before you can come home. Now can you see a fella wanting to leave home plate and go straight to second? You know he's out, don't you? Well, we think that we can do that in the church. The Lord tells us to believe on the Lord and be baptized and thou shalt be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And we'll say, oh, I believe in the Lord, but uh, I'm not ready for baptism. And there are some who will go and get baptized before they're saved. They unite with the church for a lot of reasons. They'll miss first base and go straight to second. If you do that on the baseball diamond, even though you come in home standing up, the umpire's gonna say you out. Well, why, why jumping up and down, why? You didn't even go to first base. Uh, people want to have their way. Now in this text, Naaman spent a fortune trying to find a cure. And when he heard of a cure, it was so simple until he staggered and he liked to have fallen out of the path of hell. It was so simple until he bypassed that, looking for something else. There are a lot of people who want to make coming to the Lord difficult. They want to see a certain thing. They want to hear a certain thing. They want to have weird experience. Each one of us is an individual. And the Lord deals with us as individuals. I'm to come to him like S.M. Locker. And you come like you are. There's no need of uh, hearing somebody's testimony and saying, when I get saved, I want to be just like that. No. We have preconceived notions about being saved. We plan it. We sit down and figure it out what it's going to be like. Naaman, as you know, was a prominent soldier. He was a leader in the Assyrian army. He was the captain of the king of Assyria's host. He was powerful. He was handsome. He was attractive. He was a great man with his master and he was honorable because God used him to give deliverance to Syria and he was a mighty man in valor 
He was respected by men, women, and children. And I suspect that when he went down the streets, the boys on the playground would say, when I grow up, I'm going to be just like Mr. Naaman. He was well respected. But the Bible says he was a leper. Now, every individual without Christ is a leper. Any individual who thinks that he can have his own way disregard the word of the Lord and have his own way is a leper. Modern men are knowledgeable they are mighty in intelligence and they are mighty in capacity, but they are not whole and sound of soul. There seemed to have been no cure uh, where Naaman lived. There was a shadow cast on the whole family. His wife was heartbroken, his children couldn't understand it. His servants discussed his case. The cooks used it for a topic of conversation. His friends kept that distance from him. All of the shields on his wall and the trophies were from foreign conquests and the medals of honor could do him no good. But help is always available, but you have to know where to get it. The hour of mercy is now. Perhaps you think that your condition is beyond repair. But I've come to tell you, you can be saved. And possibly you will hear somebody ask, can a leper change his spots? No, he cannot, but God can. If you are a sinner, you can become a saint. If you are broken, you can be mended. If you are doubting, you can be trusted. If you are in sorrow, you can be rejoicing. Now there are some incurable diseases, but sin is not one of them. Though your sins be as scarlet, they can be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they can be as wool. Now, in Naaman's household, there was a maiden who had been torn away from her homeland and brought into Syria, and she was placed in Naaman's house to be the maid for Naaman's wife. Now this little girl could have been bitter. She could have said, well, they took me from my homeland without my permission and against my will. And I'm going to retaliate. But no, she had love in her heart. And when she saw the condition that Naaman was in, she said, Would to God that my Lord were with the prophet in Samaria, for he could recover him of his leprosy. And when the word got to the king, he said, If there's a cure anywhere, I will see to it that Naaman gets it. And the king of Syria wrote a letter to the king of Israel uh, telling, giving him 
Naaman's medical history and sent him on his way. He sent him with ten talents of silver, six thousand pieces of gold. And they tell me according to the present day money market that would be a hundred thousand dollars in silver and gold. Now Naaman thought that the cure would be expensive, but he found out it's free. The remedy for sin is free, always, to everybody. Well, salvation is free, but it's not cheap. It doesn't cost the sinner anything, but it costs God, his only begotten son. This is a gift of God. All you have to do is receive it with the hand of faith. But Naaman thought uh, that it would be expensive. And then he thought it would take a little while. So he took ten changes of raiment. He went down to Samaria and when he got there he went to the king of Israel and presented his letter. And when the king read the letter, uh, he was distraught. He stripped off his garments and began to say, this man knows that nobody can cure another of leprosy. What he's trying to do is pick a quarrel. Uh, he just wants to have something uh, to accuse me of and when the prophet Elisha heard that the king had rent his clothes he said send the leper to me that uh, they might know that there is a prophet in Israel and then when Naaman went to the prophet's house there with his chariots and his servants he just pulled up in front of the door and possibly sent a servant in tell that prophet tell that preacher that Mr. Naaman's out here I don't know what the prophet was doing but I'm glad that he didn't even go out he just sent him word you just tell Naaman to go and wash in Jordan seven times and he will be healed, he will be clean. And that's a very simple thing to do. That's a simple prescription. For one is heaven's unity number. One, or three is heaven's sacred number. And seven is heaven's number of completion God made heaven and earth in six days and rested on the seventh the walls of Jericho didn't fall until Joshua and his army had marched around them seven times Elijah's servant went out scanning the skies looking for rain for six times to no avail but that seventh time he came back with a report I see a cloud just about the size of a man's hand so the prophet told him to go and wash in Jordan seven times now any child would have known where Jordan was and any child could have gone down in Jordan and washed but no that was too simple for Naaman Naaman got angry Naaman was wrought. He went into a rage and said, what's wrong with that preacher? I thought surely that he would come out and lift his hand toward heaven and at least say a prayer. Your salvation isn't what, how, what the pastor does or the missionary does or the, 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 the person who is trying to lead you. It isn't what he does. I thought surely 
that he would even do me the courtesy to come out to me and greet me. No, he didn't do that. He just tell me to go and wash in Jordan. And I know Jordan is muddy, and if it's a matter of washing in water, why can't I wash in Abnon, far far the rivers of Damascus, and be clean? But that wasn't what he told you to do. He told you to go and wash in Jordan. You know, there's just no substitute for salvation, and there's no way you can go around the Lord Jesus and be saved. This, the servants began to reason with him. I can see Naaman turning his chariot around, and I can see a blue streak from his profanity. Let's get away from here. But the servant said, Master, just think a little. If the prophet had told you to do some difficult thing, you would have been found doing that. If he had told you to give him a fee, you would have been doing that. But he simply told you to go and wash in Jordan seven times, and you'd be healed, you'd be made clean. Now, what would you rather do? Would you rather go on in your pride with your leprosy, or would you rather go and do what the prophet told you to do? Naaman said, well, all right, if that's the case, come on, let's go down to Jordan. When he got there, possibly he asked, well, where is the bathhouse? Don't worry about the bathhouse, go on and wash in Jordan. Well, what kind of towel am I going to dry over? You don't worry about that. You just go and wash in Jordan. He went down there to Jordan, and then the Bible says uh, that he dipped himself. He went down the first time, and that first duck is willingness. Whosoever will, let him come. Will thou be made whole? And then he went down the second time, and that second time is humility. You've got to humble yourself before the Lord. He, he went down the third time, and that third duck is belief. He that cometh to God must Believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He went down the fourth time, and that fourth duck was faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. He went down the fifth time, and that fifth duck is trust. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. He went down the sixth time, and that sixth duck is repentance. He, you have to turn from sin and self and turn to the Savior. He went down the seventh time, and that seventh duck is obedience. When he came up that seventh time, he looked at his hands, and his hands looked new. He looked at his feet, and they did too. Well, when he went down that seventh time, uh, he was sick. But when he came up, he was healed. When he went down that seventh time, he was spotted. But when he came up, he was smooth. He was wet, but he was well. <laughs> he was muddy, but he was clean. <laughs> he was still handsome, the same height but he was humble. He's still, still the same height, but he'd been made whole. Oh, what a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. Yeah, I, I did not have physical leprosy. I didn't have spots on my skin, but I had sin in my heart. Yes, I did, and sin in my soul, and hatred in my heart. 
I hated other people. I went around talking about uh, they're holding me back and they're holding me down and I was bitter. Oh, but when the Lord came into my heart, you see, I heard about a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins where sinners can plunge beneath the flood and lose all their guilty stain. And I tell you, I went down the first time, and when I came up, uh, there, there, new hope was born in my heart. Uh, when I went down the second time, waiting faith was rewarded. I went down the third time, and redemption became the order of the day. I went down the fourth time, and justification received a hearing. I went down the fifth time, and sanctification took a rightful place. I went down the sixth time, and holiness was enthroned in my heart. I, I went down the seventh time and when I came up grace had done his work uh, yes I'm talking about I'm saved uh, and I know I'm saved uh, I don't care what anybody said I know whom I believe and I am persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day I know now that I'm saved now the first time I was born I didn't know a thing about it. When I, I was a pretty good sized boy, about two years old, before I became aware that I was even in the world. <laughs> Look at here, I'm here. I didn't know where, I didn't know who my parents were. Somebody had to tell me. I didn't know what my name was. And you know, I didn't know nothing if they let, let them hang Cedric Meshack on me. I didn't know a thing, but I had to take somebody else's word for it well but when i was born that second time then i i can tell the world that i'm saved well you know when i got ready to go overseas for the first time they told me that i was going to have to have a birth certificate in order to get a passport now, i don't know what was happening down in robertson county texas Way back when I was born, I don't know whether they were given uh, 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 certificates or not, birth certificates or not, but I know I didn't get one. And they told me that in order to get your birth certificate, you're going to have to go from San Diego down to Robertson County, Texas, about 1,800 miles, and get somebody to swear out an affidavit that you were born. <gasps> there! Look, there I stood six feet tall, weighing over 200 pounds, and open my mouth and you can hear me a half a mile. And I've got to go 1,800 miles and get somebody to swear out an affidavit that I was born? That confused me. <laughs> but, oh, but when I was born, I didn't need any affidavit from anybody. <laughs> my soul was washed in the blood of the Lamb. <laughs> yes, good God Almighty. My sins were forgiven and my transgression were blotted out. He gave me power for the present and he gave me a bright prospect for the future. That's the reason I know I'm saved. I know I'm saved and I know I've been called to preach. Yeah, I know that the Lord is with me even now. Yes, I do. Yeah, I know. And I know that when this earthly house of this tabernacle is dissolved, I know that I've got a, another building. <laughs> Thank God, I've got another building not made with hands. <laughs> That's the reason I delight in the durable domain of his everlasting dominion. I'm going to serve him. Yes, I am. And I'm not serving him to be saved, but I'm serving him because I'm already saved. Good God Almighty. I, I, I'm not working to get to heaven. Good God Almighty. He's already gone to prepare a place for me. And then I don't even have to worry about where it is. You know, some cynics, uh, they try to cross me up and say, well, where is it? Do you think 
God's got a city out there in space. I say, yes. If he hung this earth out in space, surely he can hang a city. Well, they say, well, where is it? I don't need to know where it is. He said when he got my mansion ready, he was coming back and he's going to furnish me an escort. I don't have to know where it is. Well, that's the reason I serve him. I delight in the durable domain of his everlasting dominion. I'm going to quit now, but I just want to let you know I'm saved. And I'm going to serve him until I die. Until I know that his omnipotence is overthrown, I'm going to worship him. Until I hear from heaven that his almightiness is abolished, I'm going to revere him until I find that his unchangeableness is undermined. I'm going to trust him until I see that his immutability is in peril. I'm going to believe in him until I read in the Holy Writ that his covenant has been canceled, I'm going to commit my ways to him until I learn that his superiority has been suspended, I'm going to extol him until I see that his faithfulness is failing, I'm going to follow him until I can discern that his dominion is declining, I'm going to declare him until I can feel that his kingdom is crumbling, I'm going to obey him until I can prove that his purpose is paralyzed. I'm going to praise him. Yeah, until I can read my title clear to mansions in the sky. Then I'll bid farewell to every fear and wipe my weeping eyes. Yes, I'm going to serve on. Yes, I am. Should earth against my soul engage and fiery dots be hurled, then I can smile at Satan's rage and face a frowning world. I'm gonna serve, yes I am, let cares like a wild deluge come and storms of sorrow cease. <laughs> well, may I but safely reach my home, my God, my heaven, my all. Well, well, then shall I bathe my weary soul in seas of heavenly rest. Not a wave of trouble rolls.